Okay, so we're doing spheres, volume, and surface area. We just talked about surface area as covering up an object, all of the surfaces, the area. Okay, so we're going to start out with the formula for volume. Of spheres. I'm sorry. Have I already done these? Yep. Yep. I get to do it six times, which is still better than giving the I learned practice test ten times. That's true. That was terrible. Okay, so it's pretty easy. Volume equals four thirds pi r cubed. Who came up with this? I don't know. I don't know. All right, so we know V is for volume. We know pi is 3.14. We know R is radius. Okay, all right. So we'll just jump into a couple examples. Okay, so drawing a sphere, it, it, it's it's not terrible. You got, Again, you got to just kind of look at it as... Okay, I can kind of see it. So first we draw. First we draw a circle. I'm trying to make up for my pyramid drawings yesterday. They were terrible. Then you kind of draw like a little arc this way and a little arc this way of dashed lines, and you can kind of now see the third dimension if you really, right? And then we'll put our radius here. It's going to be four inches. So this whole four-thirds business looks a little intimidating, but it's not terrible. So just trust the, trust the process, go through the steps, and you'll be fine. So we're going to start out with our formula. Volume equals four-thirds pi r cubed. So then we'll say, all right, volume equals four-thirds times 3.14 times four cubed. And 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. If you're going to make a mistake, it's going to be at that point right there. You're going to do 4 times 3 and put 12. And then you're going to be upset because you're like, why doesn't my answer look right? And that's going to be why. So we're going to do volume equals 4 thirds times. So I'm going to do the 3.14 times 64. And I'm going to get 200.96. So you ignore, ignore, ignore the four thirds, just like we ignored the one third for cones and pyramids until the end as well. So here's where it gets a little bit weird. Our next step is to multiply four times 200.96. And you're going to get 803.84. But we still have that third there. So what would we do if we had a third of something? Divide by 3. So our last step is to divide 803.84 divided by 3. So volume would be about 267.95 inches cubed. Read the all on I mean, I'm not going to force you to write out all the steps like a Pythagorean theorem, but I need to see your process. If you just write an answer, I'm not going to be okay with that. I need to see some sort of mapping you were doing. I mean, I should at least see something like this and maybe this step here, and I should be able to see, you know, like, I got to see something. Okay. What if this was a hemisphere? How would I find the volume, you think, if this all of a sudden was just half of the sphere? Yep. One extra step. Divide 267.95.
divided by 2. So then that volume would be about 133.97 inches cubed, and that's for our hemisphere. So we've got this volume of our sphere, and then if we cut it in half, we take half of it and we get the volume of our hemisphere. Is that bad? You ready for surface area? Yeah, we're so excited for surface area. Okay. Next page. What? Well, this is it. This is the last thing we have to do. We just have two more things. So we've got surface area of a sphere. So we use SA for surface area equals 4 pi r squared. There's not even any dividing with this one, right? So we'll do one example. Right. So again, I'll write out the formula. Surface area equals 4 pi r squared. Surface area equals 4 times 3.14 times, what's my radius? 8. Oh, you guys are on it. So surface area equals 4 times 3.14 times 64. So you can just put that in your calculator. You get surface area is about, because remember we have pi involved, 803.84 centimeters squared. Unfortunately, surface area of a hemisphere is not as easy as just dividing it by two. There's, there's a different formula for that, right? Because surface area is all the outside, right? So if you cut a hemisphere in half, you now have that half that you have to cover, right? Like the top of the hemisphere. So it's not as easy. So we have another formula. We've got surface area of a hemisphere. Terrible. It's just not as easy as dividing by 2. So the surface area for a hemisphere is 3 pi r squared. So if I were to draw a hemisphere, yeah, it's not as easy as just like going from this sphere answer to a hemisphere answer. I'm going to do my best to draw a hemisphere. It's not going to be great. And that just kind of looks like a bowl, doesn't it? Let me fix that. I guess. 
So we've got a hemisphere there. You can kind of see the outline of the top there. And this one, our radius is 7 feet. So we have surface area equals 3 pi r squared. So you get about 461.58 feet cubed. Oops, up here for the sphere I put squared. can't believe none of you caught that. Come on, you should have said something. All right. How do we feel about volume and surface area of spheres and hemispheres? Good. All right, I'm going to give you your practice page. There's one thing we need to fix on it, and I'm going to give you some advice. Some of you still aren't going to follow the advice, um, but it's going to be it's going to be fine. So let me come around. You'll figure it out because you won't be able to find it right now. We have a maze, which I know you guys love. Remember, I use these because the answers are there, so you should know right away if you're on track. The mistake on this, and so, I mean, this is going to be pretty obvious when it comes time to work on this. Um, cross out this right here where it says 749.6. Just cross it out. And then cross this one out and write 749.6. I think that should be a little helpful for some of you, right? Okay, so here's my helpful hint that, again, some of you won't take, and then you'll get upset, and then you'll be like, oh, please pay attention if it's looking for volume or surface area, okay, hemisphere or sphere, use the correct formulas, All right? I had lots of students last class period find the surface area for this hemisphere, and then they were upset because one of these answer choices didn't match, All right? And as far as the answer choices go, if it's really close, then that's good. Like if you get an answer of like 262.9, just pick this one, all right? Because I think they used pi for these, and we don't use the pi symbol, so the answers might be a little bit different. So if it's close, that's the one you should pick. But please pay attention to what they're asking you to find. Questions? Okay, go ahead and get to work.